that after the Bible, no other ancient Near Eastern text as influential on the modern world as Gilgamesh has. In a recent revelation that has sent shockwaves through the worlds of archaeology and history, scientists have achieved an unprecedented feat by unlocking the long-sealed tomb of Gilgamesh. The historic unveiling of this tomb marks a truly fascinating discovery, laying bare secrets and captivating facts that have eluded humanity for thousands of years. Join us as we delve into the mysteries concealed within the tomb's ancient walls, where untold secrets and, who knows, maybe even treasures will be revealed. Gilgamesh, a legendary figure from ancient Mesopotamian lore, has long captured the imagination of scholars and storytellers alike. His epic tales, recorded in the renowned Epic of Gilgamesh, transcend time and mythology, weaving a narrative that merges the worlds of gods and mortals. The groundbreaking discovery of this ancient king's tomb opens a new chapter in humanity's quest for understanding as scientists unravel the mysteries that lie within it. Many historians agree that Gilgamesh served as a historical ruler of the Sumerian city-state of Uruk, likely reigning during the early part of the early dynastic period approximately 2900 to 2350 BC. While precise dates for Gilgamesh's life are challenging, estimates typically place it between 2800 and 2500 BC. A discovered inscription from the archaic texts at Ur refers to Gilgamesh, indicating him as the one whom UTU has selected. Additionally, the Tamal inscription from the reign of Ishbi era, circa 1953 to circa 1920 BC, credits Gilgamesh with constructing Uruk's walls. He is also mentioned in the Sumerian king list and linked to King Enmabaragesi of Kish. Worshipped as a god during the later early dynastic period, Gilgamesh gained particular reverence during the third dynasty of Ur, circa 2112 to circa 2004 BC, when kings declared him their divine brother and friend. King Shulgi of Ur even proclaimed himself Gilgamesh's brother. Over time, stories about Gilgamesh may have evolved, possibly incorporating elements from the lives of other historical figures like Gudea, the second dynasty ruler of Lagash from 2144 to 2124 BC. Prayers on clay tablets depict Gilgamesh as a judge of the dead in the underworld. Five distinct Sumerian poems recount the adventures of Gilgamesh. The earliest known mention of Gilgamesh in literature likely occurs in the Sumerian poem Gilgamesh, Enkidu, and the Netherworld. The narrative commences with a hulupu tree, potentially a willow, situated along the Euphrates River's banks. Inanna, the goddess, relocates the tree to her Uruk garden to craft a throne from it upon full growth. As the tree matures, it faces intrusion by the serpent who knows no charm, the Anzu bird and Lilitu, a Mesopotamian demon prompting Inanna's lament. In this tale, Gilgamesh, portrayed as Inanna's brother, slays the serpent, leading to the retreat of the Anzu bird and Lilitu. Gilgamesh's companions subsequently fashioned a bed and throne from the felled tree for Inanna. How did Inanna appreciate Gilgamesh? To thank Gilgamesh for his bravery and heroism, Inanna creates a piku and a miku, possibly a drum and drumsticks, However, Gilgamesh loses these items, prompting him to seek their retrieval. His servant Enkidu ventures into the underworld to retrieve them, but violates its stringent laws, condemning him to never return. The remaining dialogue sees Gilgamesh questioning the shade of his departed companion about the mysteries of the underworld. Another Sumerian poem, Gilgamesh and Aga, narrates Gilgamesh's successful rebellion against Aga, his liege lord who ruled the city-state of Kish. The tale of Gilgamesh and Huawa recounts Gilgamesh and his servant Enkidu, along with 50 volunteers from Uruk, defeating the monster Huawa, appointed as the guardian of the cedar forest by the god Enlil. In another poem called Gilgamesh and the Bull of Heaven, the duo confronts and slays the Bull of Heaven, dispatched by the goddess Inanna to attack them. The Sumerian version differs significantly from the later Akkadian epic of Gilgamesh. In the Sumerian poem, Inanna maintains distance from Gilgamesh. At the same time, in the Akkadian epic, she invites him to be her consort. Additionally, the threats made by Inanna differ. In Sumerian, she threatens a deafening cry reaching the earth, whereas in Akkadian, she threatens to wake the dead to consume the living. A poem titled The Death of Gilgamesh is poorly preserved. 
Still, it depicts a grand state funeral followed by the deceased's arrival in the underworld. There is a possibility of misinterpretation, and the poem might narrate the death of Enkidu. Gilgamesh emerged as the quintessential hero in the ancient world, a daring, bold, yet tragic figure symbolic of humanity's futile yet ceaseless pursuit of fame, glory, and immortality. By the Old Babylonian period, approximately 1830 to 1531 BC, tales of Gilgamesh's legendary exploits had been amalgamated into one or several extensive epics. The Epic of Gilgamesh, providing the most comprehensive account of his adventures, was penned in Akkadian by the scribe Sinleki running during the Middle Babylonian period, circa 1600 to 1155 BC. Preserved on 12 clay tablets dating to the 7th century BC and discovered in the library of Ashurbanipal in Nineveh, this version is not fully intact with numerous sections missing or damaged. Some scholars and translators supplement these gaps with material from earlier Sumerian poems or other epic versions in diverse locations across the Near East. In this epic, Gilgamesh is introduced as two-thirds divine and one-third mortal. Initially depicted as a harsh, oppressive ruler at the poem's onset, Gilgamesh's cruelty is met with divine intervention. Anu, the god, responds by creating the wild man Enkidu as retribution. Tamed by the prostitute Shamat, Enkidu journeys to Uruk to confront Gilgamesh. Despite Gilgamesh's ultimate victory in their wrestling match, he is deeply impressed by Enkidu's strength and resilience, leading to their profound friendship of equal standing. Tablets the three through IV detail Gilgamesh and Enkidu's journey to the cedar forest, guarded by Humbaba. Overcoming challenges, they reach the forest where, in a confrontation with Humbaba, Gilgamesh seeks divine assistance from Shamash. God blinds Humbaba with eight winds, and despite his pleas for mercy, the heroes behead him. Tablet the sixth sees Gilgamesh's return to Uruk, where Ishtar demands him as her consort, a proposition he vehemently rejects, admonishing her mistreatment of past lovers. To retaliate, Ishtar approaches her father, Anu, demanding the Bull of Heaven, which she unleashes to attack Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh and Enkidu successfully defeat the bull, presenting their hearts to Shamash. During their rest, Ishtar curses Gilgamesh from the walls of Uruk. In response, Enkidu tears off the bull's right thigh, hurling it at Ishtar and expressing his desire to inflict more harm. Ishtar summons courtesans, prostitutes, and harlots to mourn the fallen bull while Gilgamesh celebrates its defeat. Tablet 7th commences with Enkidu narrating a dream in which Anu, Ea, and Shamash decree that either Gilgamesh or Enkidu must perish to avenge the Bull of Heaven. They choose Enkidu, who falls ill and experiences an underworld dream before his death. Tablet 8th depicts Gilgamesh's profound grief for his lost friend and outlines the details of Enkidu's funeral. Tablets 9 through 7th chronicle Gilgamesh's arduous journey, driven by sorrow and fear of his mortality, as he overcomes numerous challenges to reach Utnapishtim, the lone survivor of the Great Flood, bestowed with immortality by the gods. What is Gilgamesh's relationship to the Bible? Many themes, narrative components, and characters within the Hebrew Bible correlate with the Epic of Gilgamesh. Key parallels include the stories of the Garden of Eden, the wisdom from Ecclesiastes, and the Genesis Flood account. Scholars have long acknowledged similarities between the tales of Enkidu and Shamhat and Adam and Eve. Both narratives involve the creation of a man from the soil by a god, his existence in a natural setting alongside animals, and his temptation by a woman. The man accepts food from the woman, covers his nakedness, and faces expulsion from his former realm with no possibility of return. A shared element is the presence of a serpent stealing a plant of immortality from the hero later in the epic. However, a significant difference arises in Enkidu's response to his seduction away from nature. Although he initially experiences regret, this is temporary. After a confrontation with the god Shamash, Enkidu recants, deciding to bless the woman who seduced him before his eventual death. This contrasts Adam's narrative, where the fall from grace is portrayed as a punishment for disobedience to God and the inevitable consequence of losing innocence regarding good and evil. A British Assyriologist, Andrew George, contends that the Genesis Flood narrative aligns so closely with that in Gilgamesh that few doubt its derivation from a Mesopotamian account. 
Notably, the Genesis Flood story mirrors the Gilgamesh Flood tale point by point, and in the same order, even when alternative options are feasible. In a 2001 Torah commentary for the conservative movement of Judaism, Robert Wexler, a rabbinic scholar, asserted that the most plausible assumption is that both Genesis and Gilgamesh drew their material from a shared tradition about the flood in Mesopotamia, diverging in their retelling. The ancient Near East features Ziosudra, Utnapishtim, and Noah as the respective heroes in the Sumerian, Akkadian, and Biblical flood legends. An interpreter and a professor of the Hebrew Bible, Matthias Henze proposes that the biblical book of Daniel depicts Nebuchadnezzar's madness by drawing inspiration from the epic of Gilgamesh. Henze argues that the author employs elements from Enkidu's description to craft a satirical and mocking portrayal of the Babylonian king. Numerous characters in the epic exhibit mythical parallels with figures in the Bible, with a prominent example being Ninti, the Sumerian goddess of life. Ninti's creation from Enki's rib, intended to heal him after consuming forbidden flowers, is suggested as a potential precursor to the Genesis narrative of Eve fashioned from Adam's rib. Echoes of Gilgamesh and the Jacob story, by Esther J. Hamori, posits parallels between the myth of Jacob and Esau and the wrestling match between Gilgamesh and Enkidu. Gilgamesh finds mention in a version of the Book of Giants associated with the Book of Enoch. The Qumran version of the Book of Giants references the Sumerian hero Gilgamesh and the monster Humbaba alongside the Watchers and Giants. Does the epic of Gilgamesh influence both old and new literature? For years, numerous scholars have talked about the significant impact of the epic of Gilgamesh on both epic poems attributed to Homer, as detailed by Martin Litchfield West in his work The East Face of Helicon, West Asiatic Elements in Greek Poetry and Myth. TZVI Abush from Brandeis University notes that the poem combines the power and tragedy of the Iliad with the wanderings and marvels of the Odyssey, making it both an adventurous tale and a contemplation of fundamental human issues. In the East Face of Helicon, Martin West speculates that the Greeks might have encountered the memory of Gilgamesh through a lost poem about Heracles. The epic of Gilgamesh, with its rich narrative, has inspired numerous literary, artistic, and musical works. Its reach to a modern audience significantly expanded after World War I, and it found a place in various genres following World War II. What does Nimrod have to do with Gilgamesh? It's been suggested and speculated that the Babylonian Gilgamesh might have drawn inspiration from the biblical Nimrod. However, the accuracy of this claim remains uncertain. If the Bible is accurate, Nimrod could have predated Gilgamesh, potentially serving as the basis for the latter in future studies. The Epic of Gilgamesh shares similarities with Genesis, albeit with more explicit details. Given the oral transmission of Genesis stories, there is a significant possibility that they could predate the Epic of Gilgamesh. Confirmation of the Genesis story's antiquity through early texts would affirm the truth of God's word. Turning to Nimrod and Gilgamesh, Nimrod is described as a skilled hunter and founder of a powerful city-state turned empire. Suppose Gilgamesh is indeed based on a real person revered over time. In that case, one might ponder whether Nimrod existed in history and underwent a similar deification process by his descendants. Gilgamesh, portrayed as a great hunter and founder of a kingdom, aligns with the biblical depiction of Nimrod. Several other parallels include Enkidu, a wild man created from the earth like Adam, and a man tasked with building a boat to rescue beings from an impending flood. Biblical scholars generally agree that the reference to Nimrod in Genesis likely alludes not to an individual, but to an ancient people in Mesopotamia. The characterization of Nimrod as a mighty hunter before the Lord seems out of place in this context and probably originates from an ancient Babylonian saga. However, despite the historical mentions, no counterpart of the name Nimrod has been discovered in Babylonian or other cuneiform records. In terms of character, there is a notable similarity between Nimrod and the Mesopotamian epic hero Gilgamesh. However, suppose it turns out that the biblical stories are older than Gilgamesh's. In that case, the possibility arises that Gilgamesh could have been derived from the former, adapted for Sumerian and Akkadian audiences. But where is Gilgamesh's tomb today?
So far, the location of Gilgamesh's tomb remains a historical mystery, and there are various speculations and theories regarding its possible location. It's important to note that no conclusive evidence has been found. Still, in the past, certain theories have blended historical research with elements of this seemingly mythological king. On the top of the list is modern Iraq. Many theories place Gilgamesh's tomb in the region of ancient Mesopotamia, present-day Iraq. Some researchers suggest that Uruk, the legendary city associated with Gilgamesh, could be the burial site. Archaeological endeavors in Uruk have unearthed compelling structures and artifacts, offering glimpses into the rich tapestry of ancient Mesopotamian life. However, despite these discoveries, none have definitively borne the mark of Gilgamesh. The second location is Jashan Kirgan in southern Iraq. In 2003, Iraqi archaeologist Fuad Safar spearheaded an expedition to unravel the mysteries concealed within the vicinity of the ancient city of Nippur, now known as Nufar. This expedition placed Jashan Kirgan under the spotlight as a potential resting place for the legendary king. The archaeological landscape of this area raised anticipation, prompting explorers to delve into its secrets. A notable feature within Jashan Kirgan is a structure that whispers of antiquity. This tomb beckons the curious with the possibility of unveiling the enigma of Gilgamesh's final abode. As the quest to uncover the resting place of Gilgamesh passes the boundaries of Uruk Jashan Kirgan and takes us to the archaeological wonders of Ur, the city itself stands as a beacon of Mesopotamian history. Ur, renowned in antiquity, has not escaped the speculation surrounding Gilgamesh's potential burial place. The archaeological site of Tel al mukayyar believed to be ancient Ur, beckons with the promise of revealing the secrets buried in its sacred soil. Tel al mukayyar has emerged as a significant contender in the search for Gilgamesh's tomb, primarily due to the rich tapestry of history woven into its grounds. This site has unveiled a royal cemetery adorned with numerous burials that echo the grandeur of ancient Mesopotamian civilization. The royal splendor embedded in the tombs suggests a connection to legendary figures. Amidst this array of historical treasures, the elusive tomb of Gilgamesh is believed to be waiting for rediscovery. However, pinpointing the exact tomb that cradles the remains of Gilgamesh amid the royal burials of Tel al mukayyar remains an intricate puzzle. The city of Desfil, nestled within the Iranian tapestry, emerges as a contender in the speculation surrounding Gilgamesh's tomb. The historical echoes resonating between the legendary narrative and the remnants of Elamite civilization, once flourishing in this very terrain, fueling this theory. These connections offer a tantalizing glimpse into a plausible link between the mythic king and the enigmatic landscapes of Iran. Why is Desful a potential location for Gilgamesh's tomb? Theories proposing Desful as the tomb's location draw strength from the intricate interplay of history and myth. With its rich tapestry of ancient civilizations, Elam intertwines with the legacy of Gilgamesh. Explorers and historians, enticed by the prospect of unraveling this mythical enigma, have set their sights on Desful contemplating the possibility that the elusive tomb might find its home amidst the contours of this Iranian city. Yet, as with any historical pursuit, certainty eludes the seekers. Turkish archaeologist Muazez Ilmiyeşig has proposed that Gilgamesh's tomb is located in Haran, Turkey. Haran, a city draped in the rich tapestry of history, emerges as a contender for the resting place of the legendary king. Sig's proposal carries the weight of historical and cultural interconnections between Mesopotamia and Haran, adding layers of complexity to the quest. This theory draws on historical and cultural connections between Mesopotamia and Haran. What other theory on the location of the tomb exists? A more speculative theory places Gilgamesh's tomb in the Caucasus Mountains. The allure of the Caucasus Mountains as a potential resting place for Gilgamesh stems from the mythical echoes resonating in the epic narrative. The tantalizing prospect of an enduring quest, concluding in these majestic heights, adds a layer of intrigue to the mystery surrounding the king's burial site. The epic of Gilgamesh, with its vivid descriptions and poetic exploration of distant realms, casts the Caucasus Mountains as a conceivable backdrop for the hero's final chapter.
One might speculate that choosing the Caucasus Mountains as a potential tomb location is not arbitrary. The epic's nuanced exploration of Gilgamesh's pursuit of eternal life intertwines with the imagery of reaching the Earth's edge. It's important to approach these speculations with caution, considering the blending of historical research, archaeological findings, and elements from the epic of Gilgamesh. Ongoing archaeological excavations and advancements by scientists worldwide may eventually shed light on the true location of Gilgamesh's tomb. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and would like to see more intriguing content like this, please click the subscribe button, like, comment, and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.